the future I have seen cannot come to pass. Welcome to the channel for the first time viewers. Welcome back for my existing subscribers. I want to do a little, something a little bit different this time. Um, I want to tell you guys about my decision to switch to PC. Uh, for the most part, I still have my PS4 Pro and my Xbox One X. I still love those consoles for what they can do. And talk about the driving factor as well as some of the misconceptions that I had when I was going into the whole PC buying experience and some things that I want to kind of help anybody that's looking to make that transition look out for. Now, I myself, am a, I'm a PC novice. There's a ton of people out there in the world that know a lot more about PC than I do. But I'm starting to pick up a little, you know, a couple things here and there as I go along. And what I'm starting to see is how much you can customize this, this experience for yourself. Now, what got me into PC gaming was I love Rainbow Six Siege. And the gameplay here is Shadow of War. Um, it's a game. I'll talk about getting games and how flexible that is, too. And some of the misconceptions I had about games that are digital. But staying on topic... What got me into PC gaming was Rainbow Six Siege. All the pros play on PC. A lot of the big YouTubers play on PC. So the people that I watch, I'm looking at them with a higher frame per second count. Uh, just a better overall gaming experience for the game that I play the most. So I was a little bit curious for the better half of like the last year now about whether or not I should make the jump to PC. A couple of my friends within my close circle on Instagram did make the jump and they've been extremely happy. So that didn't really help, you know, settle the the score, per se, as far as should I just stay with console and enjoy, you know, the Xbox One X and the PS4 Pro or should I make that jump to PC? So people that I know have gotten it and they love it. So I was like, well, I'll start looking around. I probably won't get anything now because the first misconception is that the PC is going to be so expensive that. You know, I can't afford it. Like, I can't afford to spend $1,500 on a PC, which, to be honest with you, I thought that was, like, your entry-level PC. Like, to play, you know, any of these average games that you see, like Battlefield or Shadow of War, Shadow of Mordor, or any of those other games, like uh, PUBG, I thought you needed to have, like, a PC that was capable as far as, you know, it costing, like, $1,400 uh, plus. Turns out a console grade PC will usually run you about $400 to $500. You can even get a pre-built PC. Some people recommend it. Some people don't recommend it. I don't know anything about where to start as far as building a PC. So I bought a pre-built PC and I'm very happy with it. Uh, I don't know any different. I don't know any better. Maybe in like three years, four years from now, when I go out and I get my own rig and I build it from scratch with the help of, you know, just experience that I pick up along the way, I'll have a different perspective on that. But $400 will get you a, a lower range PC so you can play most of your games on medium. And $550 to you know $600 will get you a little bit better. You'll be able to play most of the newer titles in high settings uh, with no issues as far as frames per second go, which is ultimately the biggest change that you'll see in PC gaming. Like on console, the golden standard is 60 frames per second. And, you know, sometimes the developer will have to choose between do they want to put better graphics in the game or do they want to have a higher frame count? So they'll end up doing, you know, a higher frame count to make it more consistent or they'll drop it to 30 frames per second to make that more consistent and be able to deliver, you know, 1080p graphics. The beauty of the PC is that you can actually choose which way you want to play the game. If you want a higher frame count, you can lower your graphics. Or if you want the best of both worlds, you want the highest, you want 60 frames per second plus, and you want 4K images, then you can buy the most expensive parts and put it into your PC. And that will run you about $1,500, $1,600. And that, remember, I thought that was what the entry level PC was. Yes, there are some people that spend three to $4,000 on PCs, but they also do they actually work off the PCs. They're not just buying it strictly for gaming or strictly for editing. Like they're doing both. They're running channels. They're news producers. They're editing actual movies, not just video clips. So those types of people, they'll have, you know, certain software that the software itself makes the cost go up. But if you're just looking for games, then I'd say $1,500. I mean, you can get a 1080. 
I mean, it's hard to find it. You have to find like a pre-build that has it, but like you can get the best graphics card with a really, really good computer right now and a lot of memory, um, which is RAM. I don't know, depending on who's watching the video, if you know what RAM is, but essentially good memory, good graphics, good computer, and it'll be about fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars And that's like be able to play everything at ultra settings and still get 60 frames per second with no hiccups. Um, the computer I have right now ran about $750. So with my PC, most of its specs are slightly above average. Um, nothing crazy, nothing spectacular. But uh, on this specific game, Shadow of Mordor, it is a graphics intensive game. And I'm still able to run it with a lot of the texture settings, uh, like the mesh settings, like how far the grass will populate, how sharp the edges are and things like that on Ultra, which is the highest setting on PC. And the only thing I can't do because my my graphics card's memory isn't big enough, it's not large enough, is run the actual overall textures on Ultra. So like where the entire game's graphics essentially go from like really good to what the hell. <laughs> so I can't do that because I don't have enough memory. But if you bought something that had eight gigabytes of VRAM, you'd be good. You'd be able to do it because it uses like seven. And now let's go ahead and talk about some of the misconceptions that I had about the actual gaming experience itself. People that know me in real life know that I like my physical copies of games. Um, but I was watching Review Tech USA the other day and he made a very valid point as far as digital games are concerned. Uh, the future is going to be digital. I understand that, but I still prefer, like if I ever had a choice, I would prefer to get a physical copy of a game. But when it comes to PC, I was always hesitant about switching over because I understood that everybody was already doing digital because I had heard of Steam. I had heard of Origin, but I didn't actually know too much about them. And the misconception I had was like, once you get these games, like if anything happens, like it's gone. At the end of the day, even if you have a physical copy of a game, a lot of times, like let's say you have a physical copy of Destiny, you don't really have Destiny. If you don't have internet, then you can't download the 30 gigs that you need to actually play it. There are a few games that you can actually still play once you pop it into your system without any optimization, without any updates and things like that. And that is what it used to be like on 360. You bought the game, you put the disc in, whatever the game needed was already on the disc. And sometimes the disc even included the day one patch. But now it's completely different. There's a whole different dynamic. You get the game, you put it in, half of the game installs, the other half is an update. And essentially we've been playing digital games for the last three years. So I'm not as opposed to digital games now as I was when the next gen of con with the current gen of consoles had come out. What I would recommend is get a physical like an actual hard drive that is maybe external, something tangible that you can actually see and, you know, disconnect and be like, my games are here uh, as an extra copy, like a backup copy. So if you have seven, eight games, you got it installed on your hard drive that's internal, maybe get an external hard drive and save those seven or eight, ten or games on that external hard drive as well. That way you don't have to worry about losing your games. And I give you that peace of mind because that's what I needed in order to make that switch. Another misconception that I had about PC gaming is that there was really nobody online. Um, I don't know where that one came from. I think it's primarily, and I'm going to blame Call of Duty a little bit on that, because when I would look at the Steam numbers, like even on Infinite Warfare, we never knew how many people were playing on console, but I knew it was more than 3,000 people. So looking at a game that I played back then all the time, and then you look on the PC and see like 3,000 people are playing it, you just assume that... You know, even though it's a console first game, I mean, surely if more people played on PC and it was that active, more people would be on one of the top selling games of the year. When in fact, there's just so many options on PC as far as games to play and a lot of them being free. You're not kind of cornered into, you know, a set genre and like having three or four different titles. And don't get me wrong, the console does have its diversity uh, as well as far as shooters go, but it's nowhere near the amount as the PC has. A small bit of background before I go for the final takeaway for you guys. So I've been playing console ever since I was six years old. So I've been playing console forever. This transition to mouse and keyboard has been one of the most uncomfortable things for me ever, like just period. The only time I ever played games was back in school in like second and third grade in computer lab when we played Oregon Trail. And then we got a PC with Windows 98 
way back in the day that had like free games or something like that so i played like with the direction arrows other than that i have no experience with pc gaming i am having a lot of fun with this and one thing i would say to you guys is don't let anybody influence you as far as telling you that you have to buy like a three thousand dollar computer to get started or to even be able to enjoy pc gaming because that isn't true there's viable options at about five hundred dollars all right with that said if you have any questions shoot me a comment and you know i'm gonna be active down there i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will catch you on the next one you guys take it easy and let me know if any of you guys end up getting a pc because of this video because i would like to know you guys be easy